Isla, 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 oh, I'm so glad you're here. You are not gonna believe it. I met this guy at the side of the road and he sold me this box of indie games for only $100. At least that says indie gams. What, then what's in here? You didn't ask him to look in the box before you bought it? No, he had kind eyes. <sighs> it's just a bunch of individual doll legs. What? Oh, yeah. wow. I'm sorry that you got scammed. I mean, like... There is at least three or four hundred dollars worth of doll legs in here. We are going to be rich. I mean, it is a bull market on doll legs. I'm taking these babies to eBay. Once these resell, think of all the indie games we can buy. Indie games are very reasonably priced, generally speaking. You think of what I'm thinking? Yes! Mama's, Mama's eating, eating good tonight! tonight. The ceremony is about to begin. Welcome your hosts, me, Isla Hink. And me, Elise Willems. Isla is a filmmaker, writer, musician, and co-head of Easy Allies. And Elise is a co-writer of Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed and the host of Won't You Be My Gamer on PBS SoCal. Would you look at that? It's time! Take it away, us! Hello and welcome to the 2024 IndieCade Awards! We come to you once again from the Easy Allies studio in sunny Los Angeles, California to celebrate the spirit and tenacity of independent game developers. Like the Arctic Willow, thriving despite having a shallow root system and the nutrient-deprived permafrost, indie game devs are a resilient and hardy bunch. And they do seem to prefer the cold. Very much so. It's been another turbulent year in gaming with high highs and low lows, but one consistent thing we can always count on is the indie games community. Whether it's learning a new way to play poker or facing the horror of making a telephone call, indies surprised and challenged us this year. If you were with us last year, you'll notice the absence of our fellow co-host Sarah El Male. Sarah couldn't join us this year since she's busy championing indie game devs and voice actors in the SAG-AFTRA strikes. As always, Sarah is working tirelessly to help establish precedent for digital labor laws that will protect the future of developers and voice actors. She's, dare we say, a, a hero? hero? But guess what, suckers? Now you're in the hands of a couple of low-life renegades. This year, we're gonna do things a little bit more rock and roll. Like, sure, we're still gonna give you actual information about games and awards, but we're also gonna do unhinged things, like imply that indie devs like the cold. We didn't imply that. We said it. Darn tootin'. And that's only the start. 
We're going to wear our shoes in the house. We're going to tear the tags off of mattresses. And when those devs win their awards, we're going to give them the biggest congratulations they've ever received. Ooh, hugs and kisses. Mm, so glad you won. Can your awards show do that? Most do. Right. Well, we've got an amazing show for you today. We've got nostalgia. We've got innovation. We've got nostalgivation. We've got a nostalgia. Existential and surrealist storytelling, interactive art installations. Factories, houses, cards. Monster dating, spanking. Hands, eyes, gaps. We've got it all. And that's what I love about Indiecade. It's an amazing showcase of talent and new ideas. I discover something new and awesome every year. And today we are celebrating the best of the bunch. So let's get to the awards. Let's do, yes. Our first award is for visual design. Games, unlike some other art forms, often have the wonderful advantage of having visuals. Looking at you, radio. Radio, so pompous and loud atop your golden towers. Or books, where all you have to judge them by is their covers. That's right. Unlike those snooty books, games drop layers in frame by frame with their striking imagery. Let's take a look at these gorgeous games. Mm. The nominees for the Visual Design Spotlight Award are The Many Pieces of Mr. Koo, Miniatures, No Players Online, Out of Hands, Solcesto. Here to present this year's Visual Design Award is producer and freelance artist, production lead at Eastbridge Games, the team that won last year's Visual Design Award for World of Horror, it's Robert Cox. Hello Indicate. I'm Robert Cox, I'm the production lead at Eastbridge Games. We brought you World of Horror, the winner of last year's Visual Design Award. As games grow across boundaries, platforms and formats, the craft of animation and art are harnessed in an ever-growing number of ways. The delicate work of creating a living, breathing world through design of environments, the movement of characters, the colour of the sky, the shape of text and icons, and more, has become a defining field for games and play. The Visual Design Spotlight Award celebrates accomplishment and innovation by these masterful human artists. And the winner of the Visual Design Award is... Miniatures by Other Tales Interactive. Miniatures is a mysterious, touching, and visually beautiful game. Its small and slow narrative is told through different worlds, each with their own unique visual design that come together as one full, cohesive aesthetic. The visual style is inspired by graphic novels, picture books, and illustration, and the game excels in bringing each of these to life in cohesion with the game's interactivity. The jury loved how miniatures evokes childhood wonder and magic while simultaneously mixing in childhood loneliness and melancholia. Such a beautiful game. Congratulations, miniatures. Like great wine and cheese, indie game developers only get better with time, you know? Also like wine and cheese, the names of indie game studios are often hard to pronounce. Such as Sauvignon and Jarlsberg, who have made some of my favorite games. Cheesy, but good. <laughs> The Vanguard Award is our first honorary award of the evening. And what an honor it is to recognize a studio that has been around the proverbial coin block, stayed the obstacle course, and weathered the tumultuous twists and turns of our industry to continue making great games. It's what we in the industry call longevity. longevity. You have to say it very long, you see. Long. This remarkable yet currently unnamed for reasons of suspense building studio has been a pioneer on the frontier of independent games development, forging a path to lead the way for other aspiring devs. And now let's pass the reins to a special guest here to present the Vanguard Award. Hello, my name is Lukáš Kunce and I'm a producer here at Amanita Design, our little studio based in Czech Republic in Prague. Um, as you can see, uh, we've been pretty busy lately uh, with four teams under one roof and with three uh, video game projects and one tabletop project in development right now. And this week we have all gathered here in our studio to test each other's games, play each other's games and share feedback and just enjoy the time together with this amazing group of like-minded people. 
Around this time of the year, uh, our studio had the honor of receiving the very first Indicate Vanguard Award, an award that is presented to pioneering independent studios uh, that have been active since the early days, uh, well before indie games were even a major part of the gaming industry. And today it is my immense honor to announce the recipient of this year's Indicate Vanguard Award. Uh, it is a studio that has consistently delivered amazing, outstanding work ever since their 2011 debut. Um, they have evolved with each new game. Uh, they have even managed to involve their community in the development process of their titles. Um, the creators of amazing games like Bastion, Transistor, Pyre or the two Hades games, the recipient of the 2024 Indicate Vanguard Award is Supergiant Games. Thank you, Indicate, for this award. Uh, we only exist as Supergiant Games uh, thanks to the work of other small teams that came before us. We played Castle Crashers and World of Goo and wondered, could we do something like that? We started Supergiant Games 15 years ago, about, and uh, the seven of us who worked on our first game, Bastion, are still here. We've grown to a team of over 25 people, and we are just so grateful to our fans for supporting us through the years and allowing us to do this work. If a super giant game has connected with you, know that it means the world to us that it did, and know that your support is the only reason that we're able to continue to make games together. And we hope to be doing this long into the future. So thank you so much. Very well earned, super giant. Looking forward to Hades 2. You're good. You're good. I'll give you that. I can't believe you pulled this off. What's this or you now? think you did? What, what? You think you did? The Indicate Awards. <laughs> <laughs> this is all one elaborate trick to make me doubt my sense of reality, isn't it? Isn't it? You Shutter Islanding me? No. What? You filled this studio set with puzzles, didn't you? What? <laughs> didn't you? There's no way, no way that all the nominees are this amazing for real. Did, Tell, come clean, Isla. This is an illusion. No. Did did you what what did you like read the live action award description and it scrambled your psyche like Michael Douglas in the game? Oh, great movie. Yeah, it doesn't get enough play. But no. While this award show is a celebration of immersive theater experiences and innovative physical spaces, I I, I could see how that might have led you into a reality questioning spiral. But no, our lives are sadly quite real. Uh huh. Then why are there cameras here? We're Riddle me that. We're literally streaming right... Never mind. Look, let's just check out the nominees. The nominees for the Live Action Spotlight Award are Chroma Corp, Facades of Ingress, Lennox Mutual, Memoirscape, and No More Rainbows. Joining us to present the Live Action Award are developers from last year's winner, Chumo. Hi, we're the team behind Trumo, the Exorcist Exams, and we're here to announce this year's live action Indicate Award. The oncoming frontier of play and experience design includes the amazing worlds of immersive theater, themed experiences, virtual and augmented reality spaces, escape rooms, and more exploration of bespoke physical experiences often designed for groups of people and social engagement. The location-based and live play awards we were experiences innovating these spaces and crafting new magical spaces for play. And we're proud to announce that this year's live action indicate award goes to Chroma Corp by, by the Chroma Corp team. team. Chroma Corp stands out due to its perfectly executed ambition. The physical build is stunning, the gameplay loop satisfying, and all elements well support a message of individuality and resistance against corporate control. The game never feels heavy though, humor and quick pacing keeping it playable and accessible. Its unique aesthetic leaning into vintage animation also sets it apart. With theme park level quality, Chroma Corp succeeds in all its aims. Nice work, Chromacore. I love a little corporate subversion. I have an idea. What if, for the Audio Design Award, we stay completely silent 
and let people listen to the world around them. Oh, like a John Cage sort of thing? Mm -hmm. The audience will experience the true sound of their environment. Then they'll reflect on the immense skill required for audio designers to create a sense of space or evoke the desired emotions. A new feeling of respect for our nominees will grow in the silence. Yes, exactly, exactly. What do you think? I don't get it. You know, it's a little too high concept for me, personally. Let's stick to the chit-chat and the jokey, you know, back and right. forth, okay? Okay. And check out our nominees. The nominees for the Audio Design Spotlight Award are Everdeep Aurora, Lightbreak, The Lullaby of Life, Music Power Up, Star Stuff. Welcome the presenter of the Audio Design Award. It is the director of last year's winner, We Are OFK, Teddy Deef. Hi, I'm Omniboy, the music composer for Team OFK. And as a previous Indicate Award winner, it is my great honor to present this year's Audio Spotlight Award. Now the Audio Spotlight Award honors the craft of auditory engagement, using music as feedback and sound design and audio cues to help derive meaning, context, and interaction for a video game. Now, a legendary game developer named Masahiro Sakurai, which I'm sure you all know, once said, a masterpiece doesn't have bad audio. And I realize that even the quote, no masterpiece has bad audio can be a pretty divisive quote. I think it just shows how important music and sound has been in video games from the very beginning. And even today, plenty of modern composers and modern game developers are innovating and transforming how we actually interact with sound in games. And I think that this year's winner understood that. And that's why it's my pleasure to present this year's Audio Spotlight Award to Music Power Up by Micro Studio. Music Power Up's meticulously crafted 8-bit soundtrack and sound effects perfectly capture an era. But the innovative minigames go above and beyond. The variety of mechanics from synthesizer calibration to racing arcades and the excellent implementation make the game an incredible exploration of all things audio and music in the video game world. It's rare to see such a detailed and educational approach to sound properties in gaming, and music power-up sets a new standard. The jury was blown away by the breadth of gameplay experiences focused on the performance and playfulness of music. Congrats to Music Power Up. What a perfect game to capture that retro sound. Next, we present IndieCade's Trailblazer Award. Have I ever told you that I'm a bit of a trailblazer myself? You. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So you spent a career contributing innovations to the field of game development. You were bold in mm -hmm. the face of obstacles trying to hold you back. Mm -hmm. You, Isla. Mm -hmm. You inspired those who came behind you. Yes. I was the first person to mix all of the drink flavors in the soda machine into one drink. That's not, there is no way that that the is The year true. was 1951. I stood at the threshold and I thought, why not all of them? Truly inspirational. Yeah. To present the Trailblazer Award, please welcome the legendary CEO of Grasshopper Manufacture, game director, writer, and designer, Mr. Goichi Suda, AKA Suda51. Hello everyone. I'm Suda51 and I'm CEO of Grasshopper Manufacture. さて、今回、インディケートにですね、えー、参加するの僕初めてなんですけども、えー、なんと、ベストなんとか賞、<笑>なんだっけ。<笑>今回僕は初めてこのインディケートに、えー、参加させてもらいます。実は、えー、プレゼンターとしてですね、えー、トレイルブレザー賞をですね、スエリさんに、えー、授与することができます。まあ、とても光栄ですし、嬉しく思います。スレイさん、おめでとうございます。皆さんご存知かと思うんですけれども、このトレイルブレザー賞、これはですね、インディーゲームに対して様々な貢献をした方、パウニア精神だったりとか、あとはまあ多分新しいクリエイティブ、そういった方に送る賞になります。あれあれ僕もらってないな。おかしいな。まあまあ、そこは置いておきましょうか。スレイさんとは
もうかれこれ10年以上前ひょっとしたら20年ぐらいは経たないかでも15年ぐらいのお付き合いになりますかね初めて会ったのが多分日本の東京ゲームショウだと思うんですけども廊下ですれ違った時にセイリさんが声をかけてくださって、まあ、そこからあのセイリさんとの親交が始まりましたいろんな場所行きましたねカナダにも行きましたしあとクロアチアのドゥブロブニク覚えてますかセイリさんお城の周りをねあのちょっと散歩しましょうって言ったらあの1時間かけて一周させられたりとかいや大変でした、まあ、いろんなことがセイリさんとありましたいろんな思い出ありますあれは確か東京で行われたイベントなんですけれどもその時に2人で即興で企画を立てましょうなんつってね考えたのがホテルバルセロナなんですねセイリさんを率いるホワイトホールがなんとほぼ完成にこぎつけていただきました本当にセイリさんのパワフルな、えー、このエネルギッシュな開発の力クリエイティブの魂というものに本当は僕は本当感服してます。で、ね、生さんいつもありがとうございます。さて今回僕がプレゼンターとして改めて生理さんにですねトレイルブレザー賞を授与できることまあ本当に光栄に思います。そして生理さん、えー、これまでさまざまなゲーム業界の貢献影響力もそうですね魂スピリットこれ同じ意味なんですけども<笑>刺激を与えてくれたことまあ本当に素晴らしいと思います。エスエさんおめでとうございました。ホワイトアールズのスエリーです。日本の大阪でインディーゲームを作っています。今回インディケードでアワードを受賞できたということでとても嬉しく思っています、えー。2016年にホワイトアールズを立ち上げてからさまざまなゲームに取り組んできました。ザミッシング、J.J. マクフィールドと追憶と。ザ・グッドライフそれからデスゲームホテルそれぞれ違った特徴を持っているゲームになりますこれからもですねインディーゲームのこういった新しい可能性を広げていくためにこういう変わったタイトルに挑戦していきたいと思っています現在は尊敬する先輩クリエイターの須田剛一さんとともにホテルバルセロナというコラボレーション作品に取り組んでいますこれからも大阪から世界中の「あなたへ」というスローガンをもとにインディーゲームを作り続けていくつもりです最後にこの場を借りて感謝の気持ちを伝えさせてください今回アワードを受賞できたことを本当に嬉しく思ってます支えてくださったファンの皆さんそれからスタッフ家族友人それと先輩方々心から感謝してますありがとうございます I'd like to send my gratitude to everyone who made this opportunity Thank you for your all support I love you all Congratulations, Swery. Obviously, I love Deadly Premonition, but the missing JJ McField and the Island of Lost Memories is such an important and powerful game for me personally. Congrats. Dark dreams don't die, they never die. They never Not die. Here. They Not never here. die. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> Haley's,、mm. what do matching tracksuits, cheating at poker, cracking codes on a factory floor, mutating friends, and the tragic backstory of a hideous monster all have in common? My childhood in Canada? Yeah, what? No. I thought you were going to say tabletops. Tabletops? Yeah, the, the nominees for Tabletop Design Award have us doing all of that and more. Let's take a look at those and then later we can find you a therapist, maybe. Yes, please. I think my therapist is going to need a therapist when we're done. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Nominee for the Tabletop Design Spotlight Award are. Balatra, Deathmatch Island, Monstrous, The Stories Behind the Stat Blocks, The Morrison Game Factory, The Zone. Here to present this year's Tabletop Design Award is Jason Morningstar, winner of last year's Tabletop Design Award for Desperation and creator of Fiasco, one of my favorite tabletop games of all time. Hi, my name is Jason Morningstar of Bully Pulpit Games. Last year, our game Desperation won the Tabletop Design Spotlight Award at Indicade, and this year I'm here to present the winner for 2024. So,、uh, staring across a board, or a hand of cards, or even a chaotic pile of detailed paper notes,、uh, games played at the table, often with friends, leveraging the imagination and companionable experiences, is the heart of games for many of us. 
The Tabletop Game Award celebrates the indie tabletop games of the year that innovate, surprise, and delight the heart. And I'm very happy and excited to announce this year's winner, which is The Zone by Rafta Amico. A masterclass in layering genre, narrative, and mechanics to create evocative, immersive experience. The Zone will haunt your table and mind. Quick to pick up and endlessly replayable, players role play as survivors of a doomed expedition who mutate as they navigate challenges and narrative complications. The jury loved playing again and wondering who would survive and have their deepest wish granted and what would that wish be? Congratulations to The Zone. I actually have this game, and when I saw that it is play to lose, I figured, hey, I'm going to be great at that. And guess what? I am. Nobody loses like you do. That, yeah. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, Isla, we need to talk. I have a confession to make. What is it? I hate indie games. Elise! Good God, do you hear yourself? Are you sick? Like, no, no fever. A stable 92 degrees. What? No. I no longer care for the creativity and incredible play experiences that indie games offer us. Well then, madame, I suggest you acquaint yourself with the door and don't let it hit you on the way out! No need. For that wasn't real. You see, I lied about hating indie games. I was performing. <gasps> I should have known. Performance is everything, be it in indie games, the bedroom, or four-wheel power steering. Uh -huh. Great performances are what make games of all types feel unique and meaningful and elevate the artistry around them. Here are this year's nominees for performance. The nominees for the Performance Spotlight Award are Glitch Spanker, Lil Guardsman, The Quiet Things, The Wear Cleaner, to present this year's performance award is award-winning singer and voice actress, Erin Yvette. Hi, I'm Erin Yvette. I'm a voice actor and indie K juror for the performance spotlight category. The performance award honors a unique or particularly sublime performance, voice, motion capture, video, live, and more. As games grow in cultural weight and professional development, the field of independent development has involved a larger variety of artists from all disciplines. The brilliant pacing, empathy, and understanding of the best performers has been harnessed this decade to make some of the most arresting play experiences we have ever seen. This award celebrates the actors practicing their incredible craft in the field of play. This year's awardee is Lil Guardsman by Hilltop Studios. Congratulations. There's a special kind of sparkle that comes from great writing being even further elevated by a performer with effortless comedic timing, improv abilities, a range of tenderness and levity, and just enough groundedness. All of which allows the player to suspend disbelief and wholeheartedly buy into a wild and wacky world. Lil Guardsman truly shines, with a large ensemble of performers who voiced over 7,500 lines of dialogue in a seemingly endless line of new characters. Every encounter feels fresh and distinct, the delivery of each punchline magnetically pulling the player in for just one more interrogation. The heartbeat of this game lies in these moments, where Lil's colorful and vibrant world comes to life. Congratulations to Lil Guardsman for gracing us with such funny and charming performances. The Game Changer Award celebrates someone who makes a significant positive impact on the gaming landscape. This year's recipient has been and continues to be a massive positive force in the industry and also in my life. But I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. Here to present this year's Game Changer Award is a multi-talented writer, actor, showrunner, and voice actor. You know her, you love her. It's Ashley Birch. Hello, Indicade. My name is Ashley Birch, and it is my immense honor and privilege to announce this year's Game Changer Award. This award celebrates an individual who has fundamentally changed our industry, someone whose work, dedication, and care for the games community is undeniable. 
someone whose efforts have made this industry and the people who work in it better. This year's recipient is not only one of my closest friends, but someone whose bravery, strength, and resilience is a constant inspiration to me and to so many in this community. Sarah El Male first entered this industry as a powerful and prolific voice and movement performer. Lending her considerable talent to roles like Lizzie Carmine in Gears 5 and Corsica in Hi-Fi Rush, Sarah is known across our industry as someone who knows games, loves games, and elevates them with her performances. In addition to her performance work, Sarah is, in my humble opinion, one of the best voice directors working in this industry. Her profound and deep understanding of character and her love of actors makes her an incredible creative partner and collaborator. All of these attributes, her love of games, performance, and actors, fuel her extensive advocacy work. Sarah coaches up and coming queer talent through the nonprofit Queer Vox. She helped launch the International Games Conference, GameDev.World, and was frequently instrumental in the creation of this very awards show. But most recently, Sarah has changed the games industry by daring to fight against corporate greed and exploitation as the chair of the sag after Interactive Negotiating Committee. sag after has been on strike against video games since July because our employers refuse to agree to common sense AI protections. These companies, massive multi-million dollar corporations like EA and Disney, want to take our voices and our movement and make digital replicas of us that they can use however they want without our consent and without paying us fairly. This fight for game performers is existential. And as a member in this fight, there is no one I would rather have leading the charge than Sarah. Her fierce intellect, bottomless compassion, and deep understanding of both games and our membership has made her not only a unifying force within our union, but a formidable opponent to the companies that would doubt us. It is my honor to present this year's Game Changer Award to one of the bravest, fiercest, most incredible people I know, Sarah El Mali. Hi everyone. Um, after almost 10 years of giving away Indicate Awards, I find myself a little bit weirdly unprepared to receive one, but thank you. Thank you so much, Indicate. Thank you, whoever decided to give this to me. Um, I love you. Thank you, Ashley, for the honor of receiving this award from you presenting it to me. You are an ascendant artist, a beautiful human, and an invaluable friend. Um, thank you to everyone who makes Indicade the festival happen, um, everyone who gives so much of themselves. Obviously, I think the mission of bringing together so many different interactive mediums and communities is an electric thing to do and dearly precious to me, or I wouldn't have volunteered so many hours to making it festive with my particular brand of extreme yet extremely sincere clowning. So thank you, Indicade. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, everybody, for letting me show developers my love through bad puns and big gestures. I will always remember my first Indicade back in the Culver City days, and that feeling of finding my people. Someone had scooped up the sweetest, smartest, weirdest, funniest, and all-around best cross-section of humans out of GDC and dropped them in a more casual, intimate, and approachable context. I had struggled with the decision to pursue acting as a career. It felt too volatile, too foolish, too long a shot, too brutal a grind. I had seen the wrenching illogic of talented New York theater friends struggling for recognition and stability and in voiceover, acting alone in a booth 95% of the time, you are often further robbed of the warmth of camaraderie. But discovering games in that moment, in this place, discovering indie games, discovering the folks who made them, it felt like so much was suddenly possible. Vibrant, explorative work with kind, intelligent, curious, down-to-earth people. I saw how the acting struggle could be bearable long-term. If I could just manage to put one foot in front of the other every day on the acting front, no matter how small or infrequent the return, I could always feed my brain and fill my days enriched by this medium and community. And as I found more opportunities to work and volunteer and eventually consult and voice direct, I knew I could find meaning giving back to the medium I loved in ways beyond acting. It would keep me stimulated, sane, and satisfied, even when it stressed me out a million times more than auditioning. Service has always been selfish. These days, leading the SAG-AFTRA interactive strike, service is less extracurricular. 
This time it's existential. I'm called to protect the craft and fellow craftsmen I love from AI exploitation with every ounce of bravery and brain power and stamina and resourcefulness I can muster. Thankfully, games had given me tools. It was games that taught me how to take a step back to see the fullness of a possibility space, how to trace the knock-on effects of one variable on another to make strategic moves rather than gut reactions. Role-playing taught me coalition building, how to map someone's self-interest against or aligned with your own. And of course, playing and performing inside the stories we tell over and over of heroes standing firm against daunting bosses with huge war chests. What else have I been rehearsing for all this time? What are any of us rehearsing for but a call like this? Our fight is yet to resolve, but in the end, what really makes this or any labor fight possible is still and always other people. My people. People who share my love for the power and permission of play. My brilliant, extraordinary negotiating committee. Actors and developers alike stepping into their own power and insight as artists and workers. The revitalizing joy of seeing light fire flicker behind their eyes when they recognize their value and learn to wield it together to build a world deserving of them. From day one, I knew this industry is people. It's relationships and memory and care and commitment and trust. We are the ecosystem and we are connected to each other. Our choices and our contributions affect each other whether we see or pluck the threads or not. At Indicate, we know no game is bereft of politics. And when we say independent, we don't mean of each other. Thank you, everyone, for keeping my brain fed and my heart full for so many years. All I can ask in return is that you recognize how important you are and how big of an impact you can have. Maybe go read Jane McAlevey's No Shortcuts if you haven't yet. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Indicade. I love you. Bye! Congratulations, Sarah. We don't have any say in who wins these things, but I'm so proud of you and you really deserve all the good things in the world. Congratulations, Sarah. Let's talk about something Sarah loves, mm. rich and compelling stories. She does love those, yeah. Rich and compelling stories stay with you long after you finish a game, like that scar on your tongue caused by licking a flagpole on a freezing cold winter's day. Stories make us wonder and think, very much unlike your stupid friend Ronnie Stedman who dared you to lick that flagpole on that freezing cold winter's day. Mm -hmm. You might get big feelings from the existential dread of standing on an empty stage or uncovering the truth of a cold case, or maybe from exploring parallel realities through deja vu. Producing a late 90s reality TV show, tracking the steps of a covert operation in a ruined city, or navigating a series of strange tales. No one cares what you do in your personal life, Elise. I'm talking about the nominees for the Narrative Award. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Sure you are, huh? Well, all right, then. Let's take a look at this year's Narrative nominees, then. And maybe consider making your Venmo transactions private. The nominees for the Narrative Spotlight Award are The Crush House, The Gap, Goodbye Soul, Miniatures, No Case Should Remain Unsolved, and a person stands on an empty stage. Here to present this year's Narrative Award is the team from Bird Island, who received last year's award for Gerda, A Flame in Winter. Hello there, everybody. We are Bird Island, the creators of Gerda, A Flame in Winter, and the winners of last year's Narrative Award. But now it's New Year. Creating a living, breathing world is a delicate craft that involves the design of spaces, characters, choices, conflicts, reactions, behaviors, and on top of all that, we still need to build an exciting plot with all of its beats and its motion. Yes, and the Narrative Game Award celebrates accomplishment and innovation in the art of interactive video game storytelling. And the winner of this year's Narrative Award is... No case should remain unsolved. Yay! Yay! I so me. Yay! No case should remain unsolved is a prime example of the narrative itself being the game. The jury appreciated its high production values, which beautifully showcased the shifting nature of memory. We enjoyed looking for clues, fact-checking details, and reorganizing entire conversations in our search for the truth. 
The more we played, the more the mystery evolved in complexity. The jury appreciated that even though the subject matter is on the darker side, the story's satisfying conclusion provides a comforting feeling of hope in darker times. Congratulations to No Case Should Remain Unsolved, a game with a beautiful story that will make you feel like a genius detective while playing it. Isla, I'm calling a temporary truce. We cannot make mean jokes about each other before the big fun award. But that's our whole shtick, why not? Bernie DeCoven celebrated a spirit of togetherness in games. He emphasized big collaborative experiences that united people, so in that tradition, we should stay nice. <sighs> but that means I can't laugh at how you mispronounce pumpkin or mention your tiny ears. Oh, this is hard. Pumpkin pie sounds much cuter, okay? <laughs> Come on, Isla, we're better than this. Are we? For the next 30 seconds, yes. Please welcome our presenter for the Bernie DeCoven Big Fun Award. It is actor and VO artist Daisuke Tsuji. Hello, my name is Daisuke Tsuji. I'm an actor and voiceover artist. Today, I am tickled with joy to be presenting the Bernie DeCoven Big Fun Award to Wise Guys Events. And accepting the award is my dear friend and the wisest of wise guys, Miles Nye. I am just now realizing that wise guys and Miles Nye kind of rhymes. Anyway, the Big Fun Award is an annual honor created in collaboration with Bernie DeCoven to honor his legacy and to recognize creators significantly furthering the field and impact of new, big, and physical games. Now, Miles and I go way back to when we were theater students at UCLA in the early 2000s. Since then, Miles got me doing all kinds of strange things like performing as a spooky executor of a mysterious will and reading people riddles before having them put their hands into pumpkins full of spaghetti and hosting a spoon-themed game show at IndieCade. Can I explain to you the rules of these games I hosted so many years ago? No, absolutely not. I don't remember at all. But I do remember the feelings of joy and the sense of community these games brought both to me and the players. I also fondly remember the games I played with Playfolk, a club uh, led by Miles, rolling down hills at the Getty Museum or dressing like a chicken and hiding on the ground under a van. Again, I don't remember why I was doing these things, but I do remember these games I played with Miles were big, fun, and most importantly, they brought people together and forged human connections in real life, some of whom are friends of mine to this day, including Miles. Wise Guys Events truly embodies the spirit of big fun. From their city-wide scavenger hunts, original team-building games for corporate clients, and more than half a dozen nominated games at IndieCade over the years. Miles is one of the funniest, most creative people I have ever met with a truly generous big heart. And I can't think of a more deserving and appropriate guy to accept the Big Fun Award. Congratulations, Miles Nye. Thank you, Dice. Thank you for that great intro and for humoring me when I drunk text you. I promise not to make it a habit. Wow, an acceptance speech. Thank you to IndieCade for selecting Wise Guys Events to receive this recognition. I'm honored and grateful, and now I get to give thanks and gratitude. I want to start thanking Greg Snyder, my friend and co-founder of Wise Guys Events. We couldn't have gotten here without you. Thanks to my friends, Lily Chang and Willa Lim, co-founders of our club Playfolk, such an influential time in the development of this work. Thanks to my current staff and team helping me run Wise Guys, to my cousin Dash, love you cuz. Most of all, to Awesome Ashby, production director and five-star game master. You and I both know there'd be no Wise Guys events if it weren't for you, so thank you, Ashby. Thanks to my mom and dad, Risa and Bruce, my biggest fans, my first audience. Thank you to my best friend, Leah, my therapist, Vince. Most important, thank you to my family, to my wife, Dr. Laurel, love you, my kids, Fenton and Asher. You keep me playful and I get to keep doing whatever it is that I do. When I think of IndieCade, I have such fond memories of playing games that might not have found a home anywhere else. Strange work, adventurous work, and I knew that if I stood there barking it, as Nick Fortuno calls it, I'd be joined by parents and kids, 
Disney Imagineers, award-winning digital game designers who came to take a chance on the non-digital work that we were doing. And I'm so grateful to anyone who's ever played a game at Indiecade. Uh, what a great community and so proud to be part of it. Indiecade is where I met Bernie. I met him at one of the in-person festivals in the teens and I didn't know who he was and I wasn't familiar with his work, but I knew that he and Celia looked like they were having a good time and that he was wearing ridiculous multicolored pants. And I thought that looks like an old guy I should be friends with. In Yiddish, we call that uh, an alta cocker. And Bernie and I became friends during a interesting period in his time. I went and visited Bernie. His friends called him Blue. I met Blue and Rocky out in their home in Indiana. We ate English muffins covered in butter and brown sugar. Shortly after Bernie and I became friends, he began dying and he had a good dying surrounded by friends near and far. We did games over video chat way before the pandemic to bring together people from Blue's life and history and playing games. I didn't read his books until after he passed. I guess I felt it was a way of like extending the reach of his voice. But those books have been so influential to me as a designer and not just because the first time I opened them up, I saw photos of me and Blue and Eric Zimmerman playing games in New York City. And it just made me feel like I found the right place to be and I, I found the work I'm supposed to be doing. So to anybody watching this, use your work in games as an opportunity to make friends and befriend some old people. I say that as I enter my Alta Cocker Silver Fox game developer phase. And remember, whatever you do, to have big fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Miles Nye and Wise Guys Events. I have a lot of great memories playing their games at Indiecade's past. Isla, real talk. Huh? What's your stance on the issues? Um, I find personally I like when they're explored in new ways, perhaps in ways that take us out of our comfort zones, confront us directly. Let me stop you right there. Okay, it sounds like you are just reading the category statement for the Impact Award from the Indicate website. You got me. Listen, as a gay woman on the internet, I find it frightening to talk about the issues. I get that, but as a woman on the internet with small ears, we have to have guts like these nominees, to discuss and interact with sensitive topics in order to broaden people's horizons, connect people across the globe, and encourage new and resonant shared experiences. Uh, Don't be scared. The issues. Uh, the issues. I did it. Proud of you, dog. Thanks. Let's take a look at the nominees for the Impact Award. Nominees for the Impact Spotlight Award are Diatribes, Goodbye Soul, Pineapple, A Bittersweet Revenge, Saviorless, Slasher You, an 18 plus horror movie dating sim, Act One. Here to present this year's Impact Award is founder and art director of Seagulls and art director of last year's winner, Dead Pets Unleashed, it's Ina Hansen. Hello. My name is Inna Hansen. I was the art director of the game Dead Pets Unleashed that won last year's Impact Spotlight Award. Since then, I founded my own game studio, Seagulls. The Impact Spotlight Award honors a game which explores social, cultural, and or political issues in a whole new way. It may take us out of our comfort zones or mark real change in the industry. Impact isn't simply about diversity or doing good in the world. It can be creating new entry points for unlikely players, engaging with unlikely topics, or new experiences that resonate in our culture. I'm happy to present the winner of Impact Spotlight Award 2024, Slasher You, an 18 plus horror movie dating sim, act one by Andy Santagata. Slasher You, an 18 plus horror movie dating sim, Act One, embodies joyful visions of gender, romance, and sexuality that counter the violent and alienating narratives gaining ground with frightening speed in our world. Further, it embodies the spirit of independent game development, 
showing an unapologetic commitment to its hyper-specific mechanics and aesthetics that work in concert with this vision. This game is a gift. Congratulations, Slasher, you an 18-plus horror movie dating sim, Act 1. I didn't know they made a game about my alma mater. That's great. All right, let's... What do you got here? All right. Okay. Not the one who played American football and Canadian football. <laughs> Our next award is for systemic design. Um, algorithmic content or meaningful randomness to create innovative play. This recognizes exceptional works that explore. We printed this intro on slips of paper and are reading them to you in a random order. To celebrate these nominees. Let's take a look at these nominees for the Mike Sellers Systemic Design Award. We have fun here. <laughs> the nominees for the Mike Sellers Systemic Design Spotlight Award are Balatra, Dawn Folk, Keep Driving, Lennox Mutual, Never Looted Dungeon, Star Stuff. Joining us to present the Mike Sellers Systemic Design Award are Aaron Patron and Lukas Korzanowski from last year's winner, Against the Storm. Hi everyone, my name is Lukas. And I'm Aaron. And we're part of the Aramite Games Studio. Last year we had the pleasure of winning the Systemic Design Award for Against the Storm. And now we're happy to announce this year's winner. The Systemic Design Award honors a game that leverages randomness and algorithmic content to create unique and innovative interactions. Systemic design is a growing skill with many new discoveries made in many fields. Game design, level design, meaningful randomness, artificial behavior, and more. The award celebrates the design of random and procedural chance that drives the amazing discovery in the field of play. And now, we're happy to announce that this year's Systemic Design Award goes to... Balatro. Congratulations. Congratulations! Balatro is truly a game that is greater than the sum of its parts. You may have played poker and you may have even played a few deck building roguelikes, but despite the fact that all of its pieces fit together so seamlessly, you've never played a game quite like Balatro. A masterclass in easy to learn but difficult to master, Balatro takes one of the most familiar card games in history blows it to pieces and rebuilds it into a whole new play experience that always keeps you guessing. As with any year, the competition was fierce and all the nominees were excellent. But in the end, the jury felt like we'd have to be jokers not to see how much this game has going for it and how much it deserves this award. Congratulations, Bellatra was a huge, beloved hit this year. Here to talk about the special one-of-a-kind trophies for our winners this year is Festival Chair Celia Pierce and trophy artist Jillian Smith. You know, Stephanie really liked the idea of, of procedurally generated trophies, and we've had different variations on that idea since we started doing these digital trophies. And of course, you were like one of the early people that came to mind like, oh, I know someone who does this really well. Stephanie <laughs> loves them so much and we've oh, all I'm glad. Really, really enjoyed looking at them and they're they're really great and I'm sure that the developers are going to be delighted when they receive them so I'd love you to just talk a little bit maybe even get into some deep tech for a minute oh uh, kind of the process that you used to create them like what was your kind of what was your thinking conceptually and then was there anything specifically technically that you think might be interesting to people that do this kind of work yeah, yeah. So um, I guess I should say a little about how the trophies are designed. Um, so uh, they are each, each correlate to some custom written code uh, that generates procedural animations. Um, that code is, is written in a, um, is part of a project that I'm doing with uh, another dear friend and collaborator, Charlie Roberts. He's here at WPI uh, around live coding. Um, and actually similar to um similar to like getting craft and code together um being like a mishmash of two different communities live coding is really about getting like music and and uh like performance aficionados and code together mm -hmm. um 
And so he and I have been collaborating on uh, on this framework. He produced this live coding language called Jibba, um, and I've been working on a, a visualist accompaniment uh, for, for Jibba that lets me do sort of real-time coding of updating procedural animations over time. Mm. So each of the awards um, come from custom code that I wrote um, in that framework. Um, and I was trying to write that code to produce an effect that sort of reminded me a little of the the award itself. So um, the Bernie DeCoven Award in particular, I remember meeting Bernie back at Northeastern when he ran a workshop at Northeastern. Um, and I remember just how excited he was about like bringing people together in play and that being an important thing to him um and so it may not be obvious to people who receive it but in my mind as I was writing the code for that I really wanted to be able to get at this idea of like two independent different pieces of the animation that mesh and interact with each other mm. in different ways. Mm. um uh, for the trailblazer one as well, I wanted to make something that kind of like makes these trails, but then like separates out into different elements and then mm -hmm. like squishes back again. Um, so the mapping is clear in my mind. I don't know if it's going to cl be clear in all of the artist's mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of trying to get these like, for me as a visualist live coder, I'm really interested in trying to like capture the sentiment of an experience in code and be able to express that visually to to a to an audience that doesn't need to understand the code but can still see the code thanks celia and jillian those look great what uh, what are you doing with all these doll legs oh glad you asked i have them spread out here for demonstrative purposes okay okay so thus far we have been thinking of the games like they are different legs we have Yes, both of us. Let's say these amazing legs represent the nominees. So far, we've been thinking of the games in different categories. Long legs, short legs, visual design legs, but not anymore. No? No. From now on, all of the legs are eligible for all the awards. And by legs, you mean games. Do I? She does. From now on, every nominee is eligible for any award. Well, great. Let's take a look at them games. 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 Mm. Our next award is the Innovation in Interaction Design Award. Oh good, this is the perfect opportunity for me to bring up my new idea for a video game controller. Oh yeah, I, I didn't know you designed controllers. Well, this is my first. Okay, so let me know what you think. Okay. Imagine you're playing a video game. Easy. And what are you always doing while you're playing a video game? I don't know, sitting? Close. Screaming profanities. Uh -huh. So I've invented a controller that responds exclusively to expletives. It's called the 
button 3000. Allow me to demonstrate. No, I don't think we can do that. And that is how you would control the game. <laughs> uh, mm. She likes it. I can tell she likes it. Um, unlike that, the nominees for the Innovation in Interaction Design Award are all wonderful examples of taking the art of interface design or game mechanics to new and interesting heights. Here to present the award for Innovation in Interaction is Matt Stark, game developer and creator of Viewfinder. Hi everyone, it's a pledge to be back for Indiecade 2024. I'm Matt Stark, the game director of Viewfinder by Sad Owl Studios. The Innovation in Interaction Design Award honors the specialized artistry and innovation required to engage with games on a new level. This may be in the form of original controllers, unique interface design, or bold new game mechanics. At its utmost, the Interaction Award acknowledges a work that asks us to reconsider the ways in which we play. Interaction is what makes video games unique as an artistic medium, and that's why it's so important that we continue to push those boundaries. Through its unique interactions, this year's winner brings a fresh take to a classic genre. So without further ado, the winner for Interaction Design in 2024 is... Sol Sesto by Tambuyi, Gero Zucchini, and Sherry Spirale. Congratulations. Roguelikes and roguelites have been enjoying a resurgent popularity, but there's an aspect of Soul Sesto that veers into something that feels almost like playing a game of chance. The jury enjoyed the surprising high-level interactions that continue into the mini-games, but the engrossing quality comes from managing probabilities while crawling dungeons. Players constantly press their luck by running down a clock, hedge their bets with treasure and cryptic unlockables, and hope they'll land on a space that isn't occupied by a high-level monster with every click. For its clever spin on the interactions of both dungeon crawlers and roguelikes, Soul Sesto sets itself apart. See, now that's how you innovate on interaction design. Congratulations, Soul Sesto. I thought mine was pretty good, too. Uh, yeah, you know, I didn't hate it. Now, here to explain the IndieCade jurying process and to present the jury pre-award is IndieCade Festival director, Sam Roberts. Hi, this is Sam Roberts, IndieCade's festival director. I'm here to tell you a little bit about IndieCade's jury process and to present this year's jury pre-award. When a game is submitted to IndieCade, it is played by the IndieCade jury. That jury is made up of game makers who've shown their work in the festival in past years, and each game is played by multiple members of this jury. That jury makes scores and recommendations on those games, and these are used to create curated sublists that go to each of the IndieCade spotlight juries. Those spotlight juries are made up of experts in their field who consider the games they've been given in terms of the spotlight criteria for their nomination selections. Now, the spotlight juries and the general jury have representatives on the IndieCade Jury Committee, a group that reads the documentation and watches the video for every submission and augments the curated lists that go to each of the spotlight juries, making sure that every game is reviewed in multiple ways and by multiple people. Those spotlight juries review their curated lists and make a set of nominations to their award for that year's festival. The total of the spotlight jury nominations make up the IndieCade nominees for that year. Those nominees are then played in depth by an IndieCade awards jury made up of industry luminaries and members of the community and jury who have been with IndieCade for a very long time. They play all the games and they select winners for the Grand Jury Prize, the Jury Pre-Award, and the Innovation in Experience Design and Innovation in Interaction Design Awards. Each Spotlight Award is selected by the Spotlight Jury that made the nominations to the category. And now to present the Jury Pre-Award. 
The Jury Prix Award is an award each year that the Indicate Awards jury gives to the game that sets itself apart in some unique or unexpected way. It is the game that in some ways most embodies the Indicate spirit and often is the one that has most deeply touched our hearts. This year's Indicate Jury Prix Award goes to The Crush House. In The Crush House, players take on the role of a 1999 reality television producer who must cast, direct, and keep the show on the air while feeding a fandom thirsty for salacious content. Given the ubiquity of reality television in our culture and the number of shows that are overtly game-like in their construction, it's downright odd there are so few actual games about this undeniable cultural phenomenon. Beyond being fresh subject matter for an independent game, The Crush House impressed jurors with its use of game mechanics to explore the ways the construction of these programs is a game in and of itself. The novel setting, interesting interactions, and surprisingly dark narrative twists make The Crush House quite deserving of the Jury Pre Award. Thanks, Sam. Isla, you know what's pretty groovy about indie games? Hmm. Time and time again, new and groundbreaking titles redefine the ways we engage with play. Whether it's telling fresh stories and exploring new worlds, or telling familiar stories but with a unique new voice, indie games so often take a creative leap, asking the questions, what if and why not? And like eating breakfast for dinner or putting pants on a dog, indie games and the imaginative minds behind them aren't always preoccupied with doing things a certain way because that's the way they've always been done. Nope. So many special indie games, including the ones nominated for the Innovation and Experience Design Award, take players on an unprecedented journey or emotional arc that cannot be had anywhere else, right here, right now. Here to present the award for Innovation in Experience Design is Taylor McHugh, the developer behind, and I'm really glad I get to say this one again, he fucked the girl out of me. My name is Taylor McHugh, and I'm a game developer. I made the game He Fucked the Girl Out of Me, and I was the 2023 winner in the Innovation and Experience Design Award. Games, at their core, are an experience, and I think as we look back on our lives, we realize that, also, our lives were made up of experiences, too. We don't always get to choose those experiences, and our lives can be short, and terrible. But what games let us do is live so many lives over and over in so many different ways crafted by artists who then help us find the courage to keep living and keep moving forward. Regardless of the technology they use, whether it's Game Boy games, dying internet worlds, or technologies that haven't been invented yet, this award is for games who take us to new worlds and leave us changed as human beings. And so it's my honor to present this year's award to No Players Online by Beeswax Games. Thank you and congratulations. Creepypastas are spooky internet legends that usually start with something normal and then spiral into nightmare fuel you can't quite seem to stop scrolling through until it's 2 a.m. and you're never gonna sleep again. No Players Online so perfectly captures the vibe of making a late night discovery online that our own jury had trouble putting it down to finish the rest of the jury process. The immersion in the world of this game and its many games within the game is more than enough to earn the experience award from the jury. But that particularly unsettling feeling of being the only soul logged into a multiplayer game sets it apart. Congratulations to No Players Online for opening our eyes and showing us new ways to play. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's that time. 
Time to get grand. The grandest and the landest? The creme de la creme? It's the Grand Jury Award. Like all other grand things, be they slams, canyons, or dams of the stage and screen, the Grand Jury Award represents the best of the fest. Showing us how far independent games have come and how far they can take us, this is one out of the hundreds of submissions received by IndieCade that shines the brightest. Here to bestow the final award of the show, the IndieCade 2024 Grand Jury Award on the game that truly stands out from this year's fantastic offerings is Kyle McKernan, co-director, lead designer, and writer of Goodbye Volcano High. Hi, my name is Kyle McKernan. I'm a game director and designer at Co-op, and I co-directed last year's IndieCade Grand Jury Award winner, Goodbye Volcano High. This year, it's my profound pleasure to present this award to a game that stood out among an exceptional group. The Grand Jury Award represents the best of IndieCade's best. This is the one game out of all the festival nominees and the hundreds and hundreds of submissions to this year's festival that not only captures how far independent games have come, but how much farther they can still take us. The IndieCade Grand Jury Award goes to Keep Driving by YCJY Games. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and imagine all your responsibilities melting away. Let Keep Driving take over the steering wheel of your life for a beautifully sublime, nostalgia-filled detour. You just bought your first car. It's a warm, slow summer and you long for adventure. You pack everything you think you'll need and call your friends. They tell you about a festival on the other side of the country. You open your map and you start planning the first leg of your journey. Head out. The rest is up to you, including the sights you see, how you handle the challenges of the open road, the odd jobs you land to keep the adventure rolling, and the hitchhikers you pick up who may become adventure-long friends. There is so much going on under the hood of this road trip management RPG, from its unique turn-based road challenge system to how you customize and upgrade your car and gear, all while managing the personalities of everyone who comes along for the ride and how you leverage their talents in tandem with your developing driving skills. Keep Driving wrapped up our jury with a feeling and didn't let go for the entire ride through its wonderfully realized, procedurally generated open world full of brilliantly subtle yet impactful storytelling. YCJY Games has achieved such an amazing showcase of experience, interaction, systems, presentation, and feels that all we want to do is present them with the Grand Jury Award and keep driving. There's a finger in here. Yeah. Well, that's our show for this year. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. It's not over just yet. Stick around for a special awards roundtable in which the Developer's Choice Award, voted on by all the nominated developers in the festival, will be presented. And what's this? All IndieCade members and narrative and emerging media at ASU community are invited to join us for IndieCade's first post-pandemic, in-person developer event on November 15th and 16th at the ASU campus in downtown Los Angeles. Also on those days, IndieCade is hosting the Night Games here in LA. It's free to attend for everyone, whether you make games yourself or you're an avid player. The Night Games are so fun. Make sure you're there when the Night Games Audience Choice Award is voted on and announced in person on night two. And you can also get your tickets right now to join the IndieCade Festival 2024 Developer Conversations held via live video sessions. It's a chance to hear directly from and interact with the game makers about their work in the festival, ask them questions, that sort of thing. And check out the Steam sale that's underway featuring this year's nominees and IndieCade community games. Ooh, baby. All of this information and more can be found at IndieCade.com. Mm. Now, before we say our goodbyes, a few thank yous, right, Isla? Yeah. We got to say a few thank yous to the fantastic team that created and executed this ceremony from event producers Parker Mann and Willa Lim, awards producer and designer Megan Couture. A very special thanks to Easy Allies for this studio and to my co-writer and co-host Isla Hink. You're very welcome. And a very special thank you to Elise Willems, my co-writer and co-host. You shouldn't have. <laughs> a mega thank you to Patrick Corsi, who is our co-writer, who made this so much easier yeah, and possible have done it for us. Him. And a deep appreciation to Celia Pierce, Sam Roberts, and Stephanie Barish, and to alumni board chair Cade Peterson, 
alongside board members Benjamin Tarsa, Morgan Ramin, Simon Bachelier, Robert Brown, and Rami Ishmael. A heartfelt shout out to our dedicated streamers and Beyond Screens hosts, Alistair Aitchison, Tatiana Vilela Dos Santos, and jury chairs, Aaron Trammell, Chris Lorchild, and Colleen Macklin, and to our legal representatives at Premac Rogers and SoCal IP, to technical support from Josh Samuels, to our Spotlight Jury Committee, our Awards Jury Committee, and our wonderful pool of hundreds of jurors who have taken the time and energy to review these games so thoughtfully. Every year, IndieCade is made possible by the work of so many amazing volunteers and generous investments from the community. So shout out to everybody who really brought it and delivered again this Thank year. Thank you so much, yeah. Special thanks are due to the Music Center, especially Kamal Sinclair and Beata Kalinska, and to Noni de la Peña and Riot Yezbik at the Narrative and Emerging Media at ASU, as well as all of our partners, patrons, and our many members. The entire team behind IndieCade is so honored and grateful to work with them throughout not only the festival, but the entire year. They nurture the independent community at large, and their support makes IndieCade possible. Thank you to USC Games, Clark University, Northeastern University, and Columbus College of Art and Design. And thank you to our Climate Jam partners alongside many individual independent creators and small studios from around the world. Thank you again to our wonderful supporters, members, volunteers, chairs, jurors, interns, and staff. IndieCade exists because of you. We did it. We did it. And they did it. You did it. Congratulations, everyone. We are about to officially close out the IndieCade Awards Ceremony 2024. But hold on and stay tuned. After this is a round table with all of the award winners, plus we will be announcing the Developer Choice Award. It's gonna be great. So thank you all for watching. Yeah, thank you. That's and it from us. Yeah. But stay stay tuned. Same same IndieCade channel <laughs> right now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.